This is the Lab Golf Mez 1 putter. I just did a fitting for it, and to get it was about $900. This is my current gamer. This is a Ping Tine C. I got it off the rack at my local golf store, it's 300 bucks. I'm gonna put these two putters head to head to find out which putter gets better data and which one of these putters is gonna end up in my golf bag for this season. So I came across this lab putter on social media. I saw a video where they had, it's called a revealer. So they put it into a type of device where they can get putters to rock back and forth. And I was amazed in what I saw out of these lab putters. So for example, they grabbed a traditional blade putter, like a Scotty Camera Newport 2, put it into this revealer. As soon as they took the weight off, the putter kind of moved all the way around. So if they were taking a stroke, this putter is moving like crazy. They put one of their lab putters in the revealer and when they took it back and straight through, the face never moved and the putter didn't go all wonky. So right then I had my attention drawn to this Mez 1 putter. I just showed you my Ping Tine C and it's a very similar shape. So previously I always use blades. And then last year I was having a lot of trouble with my putting. I went to the local golf store like a lot of you guys would and was rolling a ton of putts and I must have used every putter on that wall and I'd left with that Ping putter. Because it's center shafted, which I wasn't used to, it's face balanced, which I wasn't used to, I ended up having a really good, strong putting season. So when I saw this Lab Mez 1, I had to try it. So I'm so excited to test this versus the Ping. So this lab putter, lab stands for lie angle balance. And the lie angle balance is all specific to me. So before we were filming this video, we were rolling a couple putts. For me, it felt really good just standing over the ball. My producer, Felix, he grabbed the putter and it didn't set up anywhere comfortable for him. It took him to get into my position for the putter to roll better. And this is what's really cool that Lab is offering. You can do a putter fitting from the comfort of your own home. All I had to do was film myself. So I grab my normal putter, I do my setup, they give you all the instructions online how to do it, and I just do a couple putting strokes. It took 30 seconds. From there, I send them my video. Lab has a technology that they can put that video into a software and they can find the proper lie angle balance based on my setup. And as soon as I took this out of the box, I was comfortable standing over it. Something else different that I'm not used to is this forward press grip. So on my ping putter, I was using actually a Scotty Cameron grip. This is a Pistolero grip. It just fits really nice in my hand. Grips are so personal. So when I look at this Lab putter grip, it's a way thicker, it's bigger, and I've never seen a putter grip like this, that the shaft doesn't go in dead center. It actually goes behind center, therefore creating more forward press. And so because it was different and unique, I really just wanted to try it. So we're using this forward press grip. So really I wanna find out if this putter is gonna end up in my bag. So what I'll do is I'll get 15 putts with the ping, 15 putts with the lab. We're gonna use a TrackMan and RCT balls. So let's start rolling some putts. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the Ping Tine C, which is my current gamer, and I'm gonna get 15 uh, strokes just so we can compare those to when I then hit the lab. Okay, so we're looking at a 24 foot putt here. So I'm gonna just start putting with how I'm familiar using my ping. I've made thousands of putts with this putter. Just left of it. So one of the problems that I've had for a long time in my putting stroke is when I take it back, I have a tendency to loop it back in and then I push out. So if you looked at a straight line, my putting stroke in the past has kind of come back, looped and pushed out. And that's why I thought I wanted to go to a face balance putter to try to just go more straight back, straight through. But I find that my miss is still to kind of push the ball right or I'll do the extreme and try to manipulate it and sometimes close my face to bring it back online. This putt that I'm putting to is a really weird breaker. It's not a straight 24 footer. Right at the hole, there's a bunch of break. So I'm not making a ton of putts, but it's not really my intent. If I was trying to make these putts, I'm aiming a foot right of the hole, trying to play for some break. But because we are getting a bunch of data, I'd rather just try to start it on a straight line. A lot of you are probably looking at my grip my claw grip thinking that I'm a complete psychopath. I've used this grip forever. Like honestly, I've been a claw gripper since I was 12 years old. I've played with 
traditional grips, finger down, finger overlap. I've tried left hand low and for whatever reason, the claw is just the most comfortable for me. The last thing that we want putting are those yips, the dreaded yips. I shouldn't even have said that word, but that's why I choose to use the claw. So for me, that's just what's comfortable and that's why I've always used it. Okay, I got my collection with the Ping. Now we're gonna move on to the Lab Golf. So the biggest thing that Lab is talking about is forgiveness, that this is the Mez 1. They also have the Mez 1 Max. The Mez 1 Max is 20% bigger. The Mez 1 Max is their most forgiving putter. This is still forgiving, but just not as much as the Mez Max. Visually, I didn't think I could do any bigger putter than this because it looks so similar to that ping. So let's start rolling some putts and I'll kind of tell you some differences that I either see or I feel right off of the bat. The first thing that I notice is where the shaft is on the putter head. On my previous ping and a lot of center shafted putters, the shaft goes almost right to the face where there is a good inch behind the face to get to the shaft. So I find that's unique in these lab putters. I find off the face already, it feels just a little clickier. I would say it's a harder or a firmer face. I wouldn't consider it to be soft by any means. I think the ping is a little softer and it's a bit louder of a click when I make impact with the lab. This forward press grip is pretty cool. I find in my own putting stroke that I like to get set up. I do kind of a forward press as like my kickstart for my putting stroke. With this, I almost don't even need to do that uh, that forward press or that kickstart. It's just interesting, but I, I actually do like looking at it and it feels pretty good. So notice that the lab feels lighter. Now it could be a combination of the graphite shaft versus the steel shaft in my ping. This is an Acra stability shaft. They have actually a lot of different stability shaft options for you. So I went with the least expensive upgrade. So this shaft is only a hundred dollar upgrade. The idea in a nutshell of stability shafts is they're much stiffer than steel. There's much less shaft flex. So for those long putts, they should be much more consistent than if I had a steel shaft, but we'll save a lot of that for a different video. It sounds like you're making more solid contact. Than yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if I was making more center hits with this. So far off the bat, that's what it feels like anyway. So the first lab putter that I ever saw, I think was called their directed force putter. To me, the thing was just super ugly. So when I saw my buddy playing with it, I was kind of giving him a hard time that his putter was so ugly, but he seemed to like it and he swore by it. So visually, I just don't think I could personally look at that. I love the look of this. And if you're someone that plays blades, um, lab also just released a new blade putter. So guys that I can think of using lab golf on the PGA Tour, most notably would be Adam Scott is using a lab putter. And then most recently, Charles Howell just won on the Live Golf Tour using a lab putter. So they're definitely making waves on pro golf. There's one thing that I don't like about the putter. One thing so far. I can't pick the ball up with the putter. I don't know why that annoys me so much. Probably because I miss so many putts that you know you walk up to that little six inch or a foot, take your gimme and you just kind of scoop it up with your putter. You can't do that with the lab. So I really wish that there was just like a little half inch or an inch little flat pad at the back of the putter so the ball would pick up with it. That's the only thing so far that I don't like. I haven't looked at the daddy yet, but in just holding it, playing around with it, I kind of bummed out that I can't pick the ball up with it. I'm sure there's some of you watching that are just horrified with my putting stroke. I think all of us have troubles in all areas of our game. Putting to me is so much feel. I've done lessons and I've worked with pros to try to get to at least to where I am now, but I've been able to maintain a scratch handicap using this putter stroke. So if you hate the way that it looks, it sometimes works on the course. I notice a little bit of that loop sometimes coming back, a little bit. That's more or less just practice, but I still feel it a little bit with this uh, lab. 
I noticed in the face too that there are some grooves, so I'm not sure if that's gonna be helping the ball roll off the face. I'm sure there's some science behind it or else why would they have it on the putter face? But it feels really good right off of impact. Okay, so I finished hitting both putters and I noticed some definite improvements, even in just in the feel and the contact using the lab. But let's take a look at our TrackMan data. So the first data that it gives us is called the skid distance. So that's when the ball makes contact with the face. Is it jumping at all? So an ideal number in a perfect world is to be under 30. So if I start with the ping, my average between all of my 15 hits was 36. If I look at all of them, I had some jump as high as 40, mid 30s, 32, but I didn't have one under 30. Now, if I take a look at the lab, the average was 34, so it's coming down. Keep in mind too, we're using a turf green, synthetic grass. We're not outside, so potentially these numbers could improve if we were on flat, regular grass, but there was an improvement on my skid distance. I had, I think I had two get sub 30, which is perfect. So right away, I'm having an improvement on my skid distance in using the lab, so that was interesting. The biggest takeaway from all of the data that I'm looking at is the face angle. Using the lab, I was much more consistently square at impact, and that's kind of the whole point in these lab putters. If I look at my ping average, I was minus 1.7. In my session of putts, I was missing the majority of them to the left, so I was pulling the majority of my putts. Looking at the face angle, it has improved to minus 0.7, so it's still a little bit to the left, but it's that much closer to zero, and that's what we want out of a putter. Looking at the other data, the attack angle is very similar between the two putters. Something I'll let you guys know too in the track, man, is that a lot of the putts with the lab didn't read. I couldn't just do 15 putts and get all the data that I wanted. I had to do a series of them for the data to even pick up on the track, man. So all of us here at Modern Golf from all the pros and the professional fitters have never seen that before. So we're interested if because the way that the lab putter is built, it wasn't able to get the readings that we wanted. Eventually we got them and that's how we worked out this data. But you'll see on my putt list, there's a lot more numbers on the lab and that's only because we couldn't get it to pick up the data. Something I wanted to show you guys about this face angle is look at this. So if I hold this putter on a pendulum and I rock it, the face is consistently staying square. It's not opening, it's not closing. Where if I use my ping, face balance, also center shafted, if I move it on a pendulum, you can see that it's starting to open and close. In that session and hitting both putters, they felt different for sure. My ping is a much softer face where the lab is harder and clickier. I found it to be much more stable. For me, from how it looks to how it feels, I think it's a no brainer that this is going in my bag. So I am excited to see what my golf season looks like now with a new putter in the bag. If you follow along on my journey, or you follow me on Instagram, I'll share a ton of updates on what's going on with this lab putter, but it's definitely going in the bag. So super excited to be gaming this. Something that I do for the channel that I really try to grow the community is I try to give you guys discounts and deals on all of these products. This video is not sponsored, but I reached out to Lab Golf and they're willing to give all of you guys 10% off. So what I'll do is I'll put the promo code in the bio. And if you're interested in getting fit for a lab putter, then you can use that to just get more savings. That was a lot of fun doing a putter review. The next thing that we have on our channel is our 2023 driver bracket coming up. And if you wanna see the 2022 driver bracket, you could check out this video series right here. That's where we tested all the drivers from last year. And I'm so excited to test these new drivers. Thanks again for watching this video. Checking with you next time.